out is sharper than any age's word. I thank you because it is going to bring healing upon the body of Christ. Healing upon the soul. Healing upon the city. Healing upon the ministry. Upon each and every body that is in this house. Upon this city for Brisbane. Upon this nation. Let your word shake in the city. Shake in the nation. Heal the land. Deliver the city. Deliver your people. Deliver every soul. Deliver every family and set us free. Let it come out with your fire and your glory. Let it deliver us and heal us and set us free. We thank you, Lord, and we say, come and have your way. Your vessels are ready. Each and everyone is here is ready to hear from you. Pour out your spirit. Pour out the new wine upon us to this morning, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for we are here and our eyes and ears, spiritual eyes and spiritual ears are open to listen what you have here for us. Amen. Hallelujah. We just want to appreciate the angel of the house, hallelujah, for giving us time to be in his altar and his pulpit, hallelujah. Can we just give him a clap offering if we can? We also want to appreciate the first lady of the house, hallelujah. We want to go into the word of the Lord today. Hallelujah. Shakaya Rabasi. on the waters He will stop the moving sound He never change He never change He never change He will stop the moving sound He will die and rose again He never I teach you this part. He just said, He never changed. He never changed. He never changed. Let's all sing all over the house. He never Matthew chapter 14. We are going to start from verse 22. If you can just go with me to the book of Matthew. If you don't know where the book of Matthew, it is the first book of the Bible. So before Genesis, there is a book of Matthew. If you get it there in the Old Testament, you need deliverance. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, look at your neighbor, maybe before we go to the word. Look at your neighbor and say, wow. Just tell them, say, wow. Tell them you look beautiful. Tell them I love your hairstyle. Tell them I love your dress code. Uh, tell them I love your smile. If they are not smiling, then we have a problem. Tell them until they smile. Say, I, I love your smile. 
Hallelujah. We're in the book of Matthew chapter 14. This is from verse 22. Can, if someone at the back can just quickly read it for me. Matthew chapter 14 verse 22. Yes. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him onto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. Yes, go on. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was coming, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the winds were contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straight away, Jesus spoke unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was coming down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, I'll die of little faith, wherever did thy doubt. Hallelujah. Amen. Now I just want to give you a background of the story. Matthew records the story of Jesus and his disciples. Uh, Pastor, just to ask, um, just to confirm, you said this year it is the year of uh, the supernatural increase. Okay, hallelujah. Somebody shout supernatural increase. Supernatural. Say supernatural increase. So now the background of the story starts from verse 13 or from uh, the first chapter, which is 14. You can start from verse 1 if you understand. But now from verse 13, Jesus and his disciples have now been in ministry. This is like two years in their ministry. Now the fame of his ministry is now growing. As the fame is growing, he's having a huge followership of people that are listening to his teachings that also need deliverance and healings and everything you'll study further and realize that some were following him because of what they can get so some were following them because they wanted bread but since this is the year of the supernatural increase when you start from verse 13, it records the story when Jesus feeds the 5,000. And they fed this from just five loaves and two fish. Meaning that was a supernatural increase. Because in the natural, you cannot take five loaves and two fish and feed 5,000 people. Hallelujah. Can I get a bigger amen? Hallelujah. I think in South Africa they can give me a better amen than you. Hallelujah. I, I'm, I'm not going to stop until I get a bigger amen. Hallelujah. Uh, I need a bigger amen than a hallelujah. Now listen to this now. Jesus feeds the 5,000. Now how he feeds them. The disciples come to him and say, we have this situation. And Jesus says to them, you give them. Mm. Tell your neighbor, say, you give them. So that is a formula for moving and succeeding in this year of supernatural increase. If you need a supernatural increase, you need to be in a position where you give what you have. 
and God multiplies what you have to cover everything. I wish I was in America. Maybe Obama can give me a better amen. But I, 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 I'll just keep on preaching. I don't mind. I don't mind. Tell your neighbor he doesn't mind. Ah, if I was in Zimbabwe, Mugabe was going to give me a better amen. Hallelujah. Now when we get to verse 22, now the Bible says Jesus. From verse 22 it says immediately Jesus made his disciples to get into the boat and go to the other side. Hallelujah. When Jesus tells them to go to the other side, he was not in the boat with them. He says, you go on the other side. And he goes up in the mountain to pray and intercede. I wish there was a church that can say, as we are going to the other side, let us go to pray. As we are going to the other side, let others go to the mountain and pray. We cannot go to the other side until we have intercessors that are ready to stand and go to the mountain to say others are crossing over. I am praying. Whatever storm may arise, I am praying for them. Whatever storm that may come, I'm interceding. I'm interceding for my children. I'm interceding come for on, my parents. That's I'm right. interceding for my That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Come on. Come on. Oh, Jesus. Power. Now, uh, you must excuse my angels. Sometimes they want to run ahead of time. Hallelujah. Ah, oh, Jesus. Now, Jesus made them to cross over to the other side. To the other side. And the word made there in Greek or in Hebrew is enikazo. Enikazo. The, that word simply means they did not want to cross over, but he forced them to cross over. <laughs> Let me tell you why. Because when the 5,000 were following him and he fed them, these many crowds, they wanted to make Jesus to be the ruler. So that's why the Pharisees and the Sadducees had a problem to say, this man is going to overthrow the government. So, but the disciples, they were excited to say, it means we are going to sit behind the king. So now Jesus, he made them to cross over to the other side. Because immediately you are increasing in the grace. That's right. You must be careful of pride. Ah. Ah, yeah. Jesus knew that I'm in a dangerous situation here. Yes. My dear disciples, I let these people, they want to make me king. They want to make me a natural king. And I've come to become a spiritual king. That's right. Do not let anyone deviate you from your calling. That's right. Uh, maybe if I was a... Uh, ah. Maybe T.T. Jakes can understand me better. That's right. So Jesus made them and Gazo, he forced them. He compared them to cross over. That's right. Now listen to this. Immediately Jesus made his disciples to get into the boat and cross over to the other side. And when he sent the multitude away, he went to the mountain. Now in the fourth watch of the night, I love this. I love how Mark, Matthew and Mark, they record it differently. In the epistle of Mark, Mark says, in the fourth watch of the night, yes. Jesus, oh, maybe let's just read it. I want you to see something. I want you to see something. Oh, Jesus. This is Mark chapter 6. Tell your neighbor he's closing now. Oh, this is Matthew chapter 6, verse 45. Now, when evening came, verse 48, and then he saw them. 
Then he saw them. I want you, you to underline the word saw in your Bible. Then he saw them straining at rowing for the wind against them. Now about the fourth watch of the night, he came to them. The reason why I wanted you to underline the word so, I want you to see the first miracle before Jesus walked on the waters. Right. Listen, Jesus is in the mountain. It is in the middle of the night. But the Bible says Jesus saw them in the middle of the sea right. that there is a storm. This is supernatural vision. That's right. That's right. That's right. How can Jesus, who is in the mountain praying, he is now seeing them in the middle of the sea? That wow. they Shakaya Dabasha. Ah. Listen to this. There will be times in your life where you feel like God doesn't see you. There will be times in your life where you feel like God is not around. Because the disciples in the first miracle about the coming of the storms, he was in the boat with them. And when the storm arose, they just woke him up and said, Master, we cannot die while you are in the boat. Right. But now, the problem now is he's not in the boat. That's right. That's right. He's not in the boat. And the disciples are in the middle of a storm. And they do not know what to do. But Jesus saw them. Jesus saw them. Uh, I say Jesus is seeing you right now. That's right. That's in right. the midst of your problem. That's right. Jesus is seeing you. That's right. Listen, in, in this church right now, even if you don't give me an amen, I know in this church right now, we have three kinds of people. The first type of people, it is the people who are going into the storm. That's right. You might not know you are going into the storm, but you are going into the storm. That's right. The second type of people are the people who are already in the storm. They are trying to say, I cannot drown here. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Lord, help me. Ah, yeah, 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 I yeah, yeah. can't drown. That's right. I'm in the storm. Come on. Jesus. Come on. Come on. Now, the third type that is here, it is the type that is already coming out. That's right. You are coming out of the storm. That's right. And when you look at back, you say, God, did I survive that? That's right. God, uh, there was that. Did I survive that? Yes. Because you are coming out. That's right. Coming out. There are three types here. It's either you are going to the storm. In this year, if you've never been in a storm, prepare yourself. Because a storm is coming. You will remember me. You will remember a young man with glasses. See, he was talking about a storm. And you say, now it has arrived. Or maybe you are here. You are already in the middle of a storm. That's right. Or you are coming out of the storm. Now let's read further. Let's read further. I love this. Now Jesus saw them in the middle of the storm. Then he went to them. But in, okay, from verse 26. And when the disciples saw him, when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled saying it is a ghost and they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them saying be of good cheer for it is I. So even in the middle of the storm. That's right. Don't lose your vision. That's right. You'll understand me next year. Don't worry. You'll understand me next year. I say in the middle of your storm. That's right. Don't lose your vision. That's right. Don't lose your vision. Listen to this. 
Jesus spoke to them, verse 28. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you. Walking on the water. Wow. Can I get just something? Listen to this. When you are in the midst of your storm, it is not everyone you must invite in your boat. That's right. That's right. Peter says, Lord, if it is you, if it... to close now. Now Jesus tells Peter to say, come. Somebody say, come. come. Somebody say, come. come. Jesus says, come, and Peter starts to leave the boat and walk on the water going to where Jesus is. That's right. understand me in a minute. Shakaraba hasa karaba. Holy Spirit, let's close this. The storms. Hallelujah. The storms were the challenge that they were encountering. So the problem was not the water. Because the water was there all along. They were crossing with a boat every time to cross over to the other side. But now, right now, the problem was the storm. And the storm affected the waters. So now Jesus, when he comes, he comes walking on the waters. Because he has realized to say two things that are going to happen. The storm is going to cause the waters to drown these people. So I have to go walking on the water. Jesus had an option to fly because his God is not limited. He's omniscient, omnipotent God. But now he says, I'm not going to fly. I'm not going to appear and disappear. He says, I 
just want to walk on top of their problem. I say today, Jesus Come is coming, Come on. walking Come on. on your problem. Come on. Jesus Come on. is coming, Come on. walking Come on. on your sickness. Come on. Jesus. Come on. Come on. He's coming. I say he's coming. He's coming. On. Walking on your sickness. Come on. He's coming. Come on. Right now. Yes. He's coming. Yes. Walking yes. on your problem. Yes. And when he arrives, listen to what he will say. Listen, listen, listen. Ah, the drum is you can come. Shakara Baba. Listen to this. When he comes, when Jesus comes. He says, I am not only walking on your problems. I'm not only walking on your sickness. I'm not only walking on your singleness. Whether they left you, That's right. I come walking on your singleness. Come on. And I come walking on your failure. Listen to this. But as he's walking on your problem, he says, My son, come. Come. My daughter, come. Ah, uh, my daughter, come. I want you to walk on top of your problem too. I want you to walk on top of your sickness. Come on. I want you to step in and say in the name of Jesus. That's right. Devil, that's right. You are under my feet. That's right. In the name of Jesus. That's right. Devil, that's right. You are under my feet. That's right. Sickness, that's right. Under my feet, that's right. Poverty, that's right. Under my feet, that's right. Singleness, that's right. Under my feet, that's right. Lessness, that's right. Under my feet, that's right. Limitation, that's right. Under my feet, yes, sir. Under, yes, under, yes, under, yes, under, yes, under, yes, under. Come on, right now, come on, right now, come on, right now, yes, shut up, come on, yes. Stand up, stand up, Jesus says, I have given you power to tremble. Over serpents, tremble power to tremble over your problem. Yes, power to step over your sickness. Yes, power to step over your poverty. Yes. Today, yes, you are walking on top of your problem. Yes, and say, Devil, yes, you are under my feet. Yes, Devil, yes, under my feet. Yes, poverty, yes, under my feet. Yes, limitation, yes, under my feet. Yes, sickness, yes, under my feet. Yes. The presence of the Lord is in the house. The presence of the Lord is in the house. Something is going to happen today. I don't know the storm that you're going through. I don't know the problem you are into. But today, Jesus is coming, walking on top of your problem. He's going to call you. Say, come. Walk on the waters with me. I say, come. Walk on the waters with me. Come. Walk on the problem with me. Amen. For us to overcome the storm, we need power. We need the glory. We need the anointing of God. We cannot do it by ourselves. We need a steering of the Spirit. The Lord wants to steer our people today.
he told me this morning that I want to fill them with my fire. I want them to dwell in my presence. I want them. <laughs> Before I pray for you, I want to tell you a, a little bit of my testimony. I had a cesarean of my new Ben baby, which is three weeks ago. I make a decision that I want to have a cesarean. After theater, they take me to my room. I started feeling something is burning me in my body. After they just take me to my room. I started thinking that maybe because of I the cesarean, so I'm feeling something's just I'm hot, maybe the temperature is high. I didn't know. I didn't understand anything on that moment. But after three hours, my spirit just come back to my senses and tell me that no, are you forgetting? Because I don't sleep because the anointing burn me every day. I don't sleep at all at night. I sleep only in the morning, six o'clock every day. So my mind come back, so oh, it's the anointing. I had an encounter with the Lord in the hospital for two days that I have never had an encounter with God.